Welcome back to another beautiful, warm, and sunny day in February in Thailand. 31 degrees Celsius outside and great tanning weather for all you people up in the frozen north. Today we're going to take a small uh, detour into a project. If you remember, we have our USB chip and we have two little LEDs that are supposed to show transmit and receive activity. But, you know, I got the USB working and the LEDs weren't blinking. So, let's go down the rabbit hole that gets us to blinking LEDs. Okay, what we need to do is download a utility from Silicon Labs to set up this chip. Because it doesn't uh, drive the LEDs from the factory. So go to Silicon Labs website, silabs.com, go to Products Interface USB Bridges, scroll down. This is the chip I've got, the CP2102N in the 20 pin package. And it's that 3x3 three three package that was giving me a soldering nightmare. Now, this chip comes in three different packages with three different numbers of pins, and this is important. We need to recognize which chip we've got. You then scroll down a little bit more, and you want to download this thing called Simplicity Studio. If I could just highlight one line, Simplicity Studio. Come over here, and choose your installer. It's going to download a binary, which you then run and install. And this thing loves to update itself. So as you run the thing, it's going to go crazy pulling in updates from uh, the website. And they even go to the trouble of showing you a video clip while it's updating. So I'm going to assume you're getting all through that, and I'm going to launch and run the program. Okay, after it's installed, go ahead and launch it. And if you look in the fine print, you can see it's built on top of the Eclipse platform. If you've ever uh, in the IBM world, you've used Eclipse as your development tool. So this is why it doesn't surprise me that it's dynamically updating itself all the time. Um, now, what you want to do is actually plug your board in with the USB chip into your computer because it will auto detect the chip and you do not have to go and search for your part through its catalog. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug my board in and see it's recognized my chip down here, my CP2102N. Now, what we need to do is create a project using this chip as our go-to guy. So we want to create a new Express Configurer project. And you can see how it's already pre-selected the part, and it even knows it's a QFN20 package, which helps a lot. So you can leave the part blank and just click Next, and then it wants a name for your project. So I'm going to call this the DC DCCB USB LEDs and I'm going to let it put it where it wants. You can save it somewhere on your disk and you hit finish. You let it chug for a while and we get a big configuration settings box right here and this you can see is specifically tailored to the chip running on the board. So the, the tool does try and help you out a lot. It's got the USB vendor ID and product ID, and then it gives you all the things that you can change. There's how hard you want to drive the ports. You can select and deselect the pull-up resistors for the input and output pins. You can set up the transmit and receive and ready to send and clear to send characteristics of how it's talking uh, on the USB and the serial port. 
but this is the section we want port configuration GPIO uh, now what we're looking for is to enable the alternate function which I now understand this is what this is the alternate function of two of these GPIO pins to actually drive the LEDs because lighting up the LEDs is not the default operation so on my package the 20 pin QFN package GPIO2's alternate function is to toggle the transmit LED and you see that under alternate function otherwise it's simply a uh, a user configurable general purpose IO pin that you can drive up and down to your heart's content but using this little helpful bit of software we can tell the CPU running inside the chip that we want to toggle the transmit and receive LEDs and that's what we do so you come down here you can see a little bit more of the settable properties allowable baud rates data bit stop bit and parity and that's pretty much all you can do so come down here click the save button save your project away and then we click program to device and it will flash the configuration down the USB port and into the microcontroller to change its behavior to flash the LEDs. Now we have to choose the device we're talking to. There's only one, so I'm fine with that. And we see it does a reset. Verifying programming, success, and done. In 7.37 seconds, we have flashed the LED uh, configuration bits. Now let's jump back into Atmel Studio and see how it looks. Okay, I realize I don't even have to go into Atmel Studio. I can just run a terminal program and I'm going to put the camera over the LEDs here and I'm going to hit the question mark key and we'll see if you can see the transmit one light up. Oh, I saw the tiniest little blink of the transmit light and if I push enter we're going to get a couple of pages worth of text coming out and there's our receive LED I'll type question mark again tiny tiny so this is this oh my finger is very big this is nowhere near as bright as blinky over here it may depend on how much current the USB chip is driving through there but I can adjust the brightness by changing the resistor value so I think I'll do that. Let me cut the resistor value in half and we'll see if it makes a interesting brightness. Okay, I now have a 472 resistor in there, 4.7K. It's just under half of what was there before. So we should get twice the current flow. I'm gonna hit question mark and boom. So it doesn't look as impressive on my camera screen as the flash, let me try here. It's actually pretty good. It does not look great on the screen. Let's back up a little more. No, I think maybe because the period of the flash is too fast for the camera. The spec sheet, it says it flashes at 20 hertz when there's data going across. It doesn't flash for each bit or each byte just 20 times a second as data is tr being transmitted. Let me try if we can see the receive side. Yep, there's a flash on receive and a bunch of flashes on send, and I can live with that. Yep, I'm good with that. All right, success. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again and I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.